Hi guys, Micro here. This is the Quest for Survival Hardcore Iron Man series with Iron Roo, and this is Hardcore PVM Episode 2. I get some nice Iron Man luck in this video and get some other useful unlocks along the way so I can improve the PVM setup of this account and just keep going for best in slot gear. So let's get right into it. Starting off, I thought I'd go and do some Anachronia Agility. I do need to get Double Surge and Bladed Dive sometime, so might as well do the Agility course to try and get Double Surge right. I need 500 pages to get it, but the whole time I was doing the Agility course, I just really, really miss Bladed Dive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop doing the Agility course, go get Bladed Dive and come back here. That way I can get my Double Surge ability much easier. That lap time wasn't even that bad. I had single surge, no mobile, no bladed dive, and I got a 720. It's actually all right. But I know I can get at least a minute less if I have mobile and bladed dive. I can get my six minute laps. So saving a minute every single lap will definitely add up. So we'll get bladed dive first. I need it for bossing anyway. Doing challenges are so good for Shattered Anima. We'll do bronze, then we'll do silver, and we'll get these challenges done. Should be pretty simple, though. When it comes to weekly challenges, you can obviously do them every single week. And the bronze and silver don't really give you much, but the gold gives you 7.5 million anima. Getting the gold, silver, and bronze challenges done will give you a good head start on anima. Or, you know, if you do it every week, you can get some easy anima without too much effort. Definitely a good thing to do on your bladed dive grind. Even if you do it once and then go progress normally, that's what I did. It's still worth doing while they're available to you because it gives you a lot of anima. Look at that for the gold challenge. 7.5 million anima. We nearly have 10 mil anima now, so we're nearly a sit for the way there. We're going good. We're going good. When it comes to actually doing Shared Worlds, just run around and do as much AoE as you can. It was a bit of a shame that I didn't have Corruption Blast, because that helps so much here. But using Dragon Breath, using Detonate, using Chain, all of the AoE abilities you have to your disposal, just progress through as quickly as possible. The quicker you progress, the better it is. If you can progress fast, you skip multiple worlds, which then gives you more anima for your first world bonuses, because you just want to progress as fast as possible and get as much anima as you can. So skipping worlds is very important, and doing as much AoE as you can, even at the lower worlds, is definitely important. So just try and push through as quick as you can, and just keep doing as much damage as you can to everything. As soon as you get 75% done, literally just go to the next world and keep going. I just did this the whole time, getting first world's bonuses the whole way through. And it didn't really take too long, to be honest. About two to three hours, including the time taken to do the challenges as well. Not bad. We went from world 1 to 10, and now we're getting 19,000 bonus anima. Kind of high. I got so much bonus anima. 235,000. I'm only on wave 30. That is so much anima compared to, like, wave 10. It goes up so quick. I could actually get bladed dive pretty quickly. I'm at 10 mil anima now. Very nice. That is a level. It's nice to actually see levels again. 106 HP. Very nice. And we're currently sitting at 12 million anima with nearly 4 million bonus anima up there. World 46. We're getting much more anima now. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. We went all the way from world 1 to 70. Okay, so we've done 1 to 70. We have 23 million anima in our coin pouch right now. But we want to open up the chest to see how much anima that gives us. 39 million anima, okay. 39 million anima is a decent amount though. There we go, after my weekly challenges and going from world 1 to 83, taking me about 3 hours total, I managed to get all of the anima I needed and I had 64 million anima to buy Bladed Dive. Unlocking Bladed Dive is really useful for like Darkness Path, Araxor, the Agility Course on Anachronia, Clue Scrolls, so many things it is amazing for. Definitely would recommend getting it, especially when it only takes three hours. I know it's using deaths and astrals, but that's 100 viz wax on an Iron Man. I'm taking that. So these seals we got from killing Hellwit, we give it to the Sliskian force. And now we have 50% drop increase at Sliske, and we have to kill 10 for our Reaper. So let's go do that and not die. Greg is a okay boss. It's not too scary, but I don't know why. Something about Greg on my hard cry Iron Man gets me nervous. Knowing that if I run into MD, I could get like, you know, a 2.5k to the face, stuff like that. It's, it's pretty scary at times. All I did was use Vampiric Blood Essence, Vamp Aura, and just Scythe Ranged Greg. 
if you turn your run off, you don't run into melee distance so he doesn't cleave you. And it was actually pretty chill. It wasn't too bad. I used a decent amount of food though. I only needed 10 kills for the Reaper. So I get those 10 kills done. Maybe get sand in the process. If not, more progress towards Hydrix jewelry. Oh, we got the... We've never killed Greg on this account. So that's the first time we got the sigil piece. So we can actually do Telos now. We have all the sigil pieces. Interesting. Okay, Greg's done. Good, good, good. Nine more to go. I got like a little people one. Let's get signed on our last kill. You ready? Magic logs. I guess I'll take it. Reaper, Simon done 16 Reaper points. Very nice. Incomplete Hydrix. Give me this. Yes. Now that I had the Hydrix, my first Hydrix jewelry that I wanted to make was an Amulet of Souls because it's fantastic. So I used the Onyx to complete the Hydrix. Then I cut the Hydrix, added a ball of wool to it after making it into an Amulet with the Furnace. Then the last thing that was needed was to enchant it into an Amulet of Souls. It changes so much when you enchant it. Why does it look so stupid? Why does it change so much? What the hell? Well, we got our Amulet of Souls now. Sick. Good upgrade on our next slot. We were using a Dragon Rider Amulet, so it's a huge upgrade. Huge upgrade. 16 in every stat. Obviously not the prayer, but massive upgrade. Very nice. And we also get the increase to Soul Split and the increase to Protection Prayers. Perfect. Luck of the Dwarves and boom. Five magic seeds. I mean, sure. I'll take it, I guess. Uh, magic logs. Okay. Still a good thing. Good for iron memes. Magic logs are always nice to see, in my opinion. Can we get it this time? Let's see. A boo boo de loop. Oh, Onyx Bolts. I guess that's out. 1.2 mil. Not bad. I guess the Chris Trisky is cool. I'll take it. Why not? I'll take the Krill. T I'll, t I'll take the Krill Reaper. I'll do that one. Oh, uh, no. I thought I got a drop. <laughs> it was a War Priest of Samurai Kelm, but me saying oh no to that is actually not bad. I can disassemble that for a Samurai component, and that's closer to another Impatient. So another Impatient 3 is now only four more War Priest items away. Good. We didn't get any drops, but hey, 104 defense, and uh, we got our Reaper done. We got Reaper points and some Sayer XP, and now on to the BM. Let's do it. Are you ready? We did our BM. We're going to get rewarded. Get our lucky little people on. Give me a codex first kill. No codex, but I did get 1,000 techie. You can buy the codexes with techie if you don't get them from drops. I'll be able to reroll soon as well because I'm at 4.4 thousand rep with the gobies. You need 5k for rerolls, so I'm 600 away. You can get 45 rep a day just with the Nemi Forest. Then Gobi Burial Charms from the Deep Sea Merchant and stuff will increase that. So I'll have my rerolls soon and I'll have even more chances of getting a codex so I can get my corrupt abilities. Now we need a 5k rep. Let's go. So I get 5 rep per thing, right? Pretty good rep. Something I needed to do the Anachronia Agility course. I had to go get Mobile on my Enhanced Excalibur. So I just used one Dexterous component. I got Dragon Bait on the first one and Mobile on the second try. Now I have Bladed Dive and Mobile, super, super useful for Anachronia Agility. I'm going to use the Enhanced Excalibur in my offhand as part of my Bladed Dive. So whenever I go bossing, I can take the Enhanced Excalibur as my Bladed Dive switch as well. There we go. First lap back with the Surge and Bladed Dive and Mobile, I got a 637. So much better. There is a 627. There's another 10 seconds saved. My last lap for the Codex, I got a 6.08. Just over six minutes without double surge, just with single surge and a bladed dive. I'm happy with that. That's pretty damn good. I want to make a double surge Codex, please. Thank you very much, game. Let's learn that. Feels good. This account's coming along pretty damn nicely. Also, you can use the lectern to set your surge interval. It's default at two. I like it on one so I can surge like pretty much instantly a tick later. So I set it to one. There you go. Reaper task done. 16 Reaper points and 17,000 Slayer XP. It was a 75% point one, so not bad. Yeah, boy, there we go. That's something finally. I, I, I'm happy. Okay, that, that's made up for everything. We're good. We got a wand and we can use that now instead of the crappy tier 70 run that we were doing. We went from tier 70 to tier 85. How we, how we, how much we got? 586kc for one drop. It paid off. We did it. All right. <laughs> That's a good upgrade. Now give me a crest. Give me a crest in the same hour, Hellweir, and we're happy, right? Well, there's our ninth essence as well. I can't be sad about the essence because it doesn't actually roll on the same table. And it is a bit more common than the other stuff. So there's our ninth essence. We got another rare drop. Second in the hour. And we have 10 minutes left. 
What do we get? Crystal keys. Okay. I mean, we had a essence and we finally got a wand. I am happy. I'm very happy with the wand. I finally have something to put on with a shield. So that was definitely a good hour. Can we get our lake piece? Let's go luck. All right. Well, 400k ain't bad. 400k ain't bad. Fang. Oh, whoa, what the hell? That looks so weird. This is a Baden Stone Spirit. All right, thank you, looting. Never mind. Ah, uh, the Stone Spirit didn't get us a drop, but hey, we got some overloads and some land dimes. Good supplies for an iron meme. Give me something good. All right, we got magic seeds for all of that effort. Feels bad. Give me a leg piece. Or, or don't. I mean, those Saradoin brews are sick. The Dwarf Reeds and Aventos it is good, it's good. We need to, today we got Sacred Clay, which is not great. Gift of the Reaper tomorrow is going to be lovely. Gift of the Reaper is going to definitely be worth getting. Uh, the Gobi Burial Charm and the Unfocused Reward Enhancer is what we need on the 26th, because that will give us another more Rand's Challenge Enhancer, which is good. So we need another one of those. I'll continue, Rax, though. I'll continue. I thought I'd do an Elite Dungeon 2 solo for fun and to see if I could get lucky with a mutated ability. I don't think I'm ever going to come back here without Corruption Blast though. So I think ED2 is going to have to hold off until I get Corruption Blast from raids or from techie because yeah, it takes so long to AOE stuff down, especially the slimes and stuff. It's so, so long. That being said, I did do Elite Dungeons too. Either way, it just was very slow without extra AoE. Astalan's the first boss, probably the most scary boss because of how much like nuke potential it has. But I just took it slow, and because I took it slow, it was pretty safe. Every time a Pulsar spawned, I had thresholds ready for it. I always stood near the black hole, so when the Neutron Star spawned, I could lure it pretty well. And I'd always lure the Neutron Star into a black hole, so it was half and half. That way, if rain was coming down from the sky, I could stand in the correct platform or whatever and not take damage. Because the rain only takes up a quarter, so it's very easy to place it where, you know, you can always stand in a safe spot. That being said, we killed uh, Astalon in two and a half minutes, and we got Onyx Dust. Next up was Varric Glyph, probably the easiest one out of all of them. The only thing that I guess could potentially kill you is the circle coming from the sky that you have to neutralize with the eggs. If you don't stand in that, you can hit like 8Ks, I think. So as long as I stood in that and neutralized it at the eggs and had my HP high just in case I failed, I doubt there was any way I would really die here. It was just repeating that using the spires for a resonance for a hill neutralizing the eggs and just standing out of fire. Pretty simple, pretty long fight though. Took a very, very long time. That kill time was eight minutes and we got some Onyx Dust. Then it was time for the final boss, which is Blackstone Dragon. Nothing really crazy here. Just kind of dodge as much attacks as you can. Make sure that you soul split at good times and protect from mage for the rest pretty much. Sometimes melee hits from the Blackstone Dragon can be quite hard. They can hit like 3k. So as long as I kept my HP high, it really didn't matter. The hands were tanky as hell, so they took a while to DPS down. But the good thing with the hands is you can soul split them freely and, you know, lose no HP whatsoever and use no food for the whole phase. So it really doesn't matter how long the hands take because, you know, you don't use any food anyway. And the only thing was fire, I guess. Otherwise, I just had to not stand in fire. And whenever he done his ring of fire, I could soul split giving me extra healing, saving a bit more food. And yeah, that's all there is to the Black Soul Dragon. I managed to kill it. And guess what I got? No, I didn't get Onyx Dust. Give me Sangen. 21 Draconic Energy though, dude. That is so much. <laughs> that is so much Draconic Energy. Jesus Christ. I mean, it wasn't a Codex, but I'll take it. It's a good start to me upgrading my Tectonic eventually, right? So did a little bit more Slayer, had a Corrupted Creatures task. I'm only 99, so I just done the Corrupted Scorpions. Pretty damn good XP with Mage because I don't have aggro pots. And I got three keys to the crossing for this task. Maybe Magister eventually. I do need a lot of keys for that, though. All right, a new assignment, please. Oh, Vile Blooms, yes. Let's try and get those boots, come on. If we can get those boots, oh, it'd be so sick, dude. It'd be so sick. I wouldn't even need to go back to Krill and I'd upgrade my Lunar Boots. I did the Luminous Snagglers. They are 95 Slayer, so the highest ones I can do. The higher ones you do, the better chance of the boots. I have a 1 in 2k chance for the boots from these ones, and they were very good Slayer A speed, to be honest. Pretty easy, pretty chill to kill. I use Vampora and protect from mage, and I barely used any food either. I just sunshine, I had an adren pot, 
and I'd kind of just DPS them. They're kind of like a DPS race. You just DPS them as hard as you can. And the harder you hit, the quicker you kill them, the more HP you get, essentially. But the task does take a long time. I had 115 because I extended them. And it took me about an hour. No way! <laughs> There's no way, dude! Legit, man! What the hell? Oh my god, Jesus Christ. How do I, how, what's the, uh, Vile Blooms? 43kc is a 1 in 2k! Hello, upgrade! Goodbye, Luna Boots! Goodbye, friends! Yes! Yes, man! Holy crap, I am so happy! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had like a heart attack. I thought I got another pair, but it wasn't. It was just an elite clue. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not that lucky. I, I had a, literally a heart attack. I thought everyone was just going to like spam dislike the video and like rage at me on stream and I was going to like die. <laughs> I mean, it's probably still going to be the same, but still, still. <laughs> Return to the Slayer Master. 44 points. Lovely jubbly. And our boots. And let's just, like, get a toss. Hello, Lelicator. Ah, Ice Strike Worms or Greater Demon? Uh, Calgarian Demons. Both of them gives me a Master Clue Step thing. I guess I'll go for Ice. We'll go for Ice Strike Worms. And we'll go and get a Staff of Light sometime. Remember to always do your merch. And I got a gift of Reaper for today. And that is 20 Reaper points for free. And that'll be it for this video. Hopefully you did enjoy watching. Give the video a like if you did enjoy. Sorry for my Iron Man luck. I'm sure there'll be more to come in future episodes. And until next time, see ya.